Stay tuned after the show for a brand new Bullet Heaven HD giveaway, courtesy of Rock and Android. In episode 77 of Bullet Heaven HD, we took a look at Diadra Empty, a PC-based doujin shooting game by Frozen Orb and published in the West by Rock and Android. We really liked its Defender-style gameplay and overall presentation back in 2013. After a lengthy Steam Greenlight campaign, which was, in fact, successful, Rock and Android has finally released Diadra Empty to Steam on July 21st, 2015. So how does Diadra Empty hold up on its new distribution platform? Let's take a look. Now, while we have gone over, in great detail, Diadra Empty's gameplay, scoring, and presentation in our Series 4 review, which is linked in the info section below, here's a refresher. In Diadra Empty, you take control of Nialra and her Black Dragon Minimi on a quest to find Nialra's sister. Over the course of eight stages, each more challenging and bullet-saturated than the last, you'll square off against hordes of enemies in a semi-arena-style field indicated by a rather detailed radar on the bottom of the screen. Enemies will appear as red hits on this radar, with spawning points in white indicating where they will come from. Green hits indicate coins that have been left behind by defeated foes, while teal indicates you and your shots. A white area will also follow you around and shows your field of view relative to the stage itself. In Diadra Empty, covering your 6 is a pretty critical function, since enemies will come at you in 360 degrees. There are three different ways to shoot side to side. You can toggle what side you face by pressing the strafe button to turn, hold your dragon's position once you're in the direction you want to shoot, or assign a button to shooting left or right. Using the Razor Sabertooth controller, I found the hold option to be the most comfortable. Shots are fired only left or right, so in this respect, Diadra MT is more side-scroller than arena-based. Several different weapons are available in Diadra MT as well, and are selected when the game begins. More weapons, options, and option behaviors open up as Nialra's level increases, a level which is saved in future plays. Moving around the stage is easy enough. Just pick a direction and you'll go there. But, in the case of trying to catch up with a speedy foe or just trying to get out of the way of an attack, Nialra can dash at a heightened speed. While doing this, a wing attack will also heavily damage enemies as you pass. Holding the dash button will also change your fire from your regular shot to the selected turbo shot. Finally, the Storm Saber is a bomb-style attack that greatly enhances Minimi's power. Players start the game with a certain amount of Storm Savers in their stock, but more can be added and earned as the game unfolds with enough skill. Simply pressing the button assigned to the Storm Saber attack will activate the offensive version, but holding the button creates a barrier that changes all coins dropped to blue, which helps in regaining life. In both cases, dropped coins on the playfield are drawn in and absorbed. Between stages, collected coins can be used to upgrade Minimi's various abilities, including the main and turbo shot, storm safer stock, speed and option number, and power. Collecting as many coins as possible helps, but players will often have to strategically pick and choose. Ooh, there's a lot of complexity to Diadra Empty's gameplay, with several layers and tons of nuance to its deceptively simple looking style. This makes for a game that has a lot going for it, complete with unlockable modes for more experienced players. If you thought there was a lot to the gameplay though, wait till you see what goes into the scoring. There's so much to Diadra's scoring that a whole video series might need to be made to cover it all in depth. Again, we'll just take a second to go over the basics. Mostly, enemy destruction will contribute to the overall score, though leveling up, recovering from shield loss, coin mist, storm savers, and much, much more will pop up as you make your way through the game. All of these usually result in a large bonus score. Huge bullet cancels can also really pump up the score, with a per bullet score being applied to several hundreds to thousands of them at a time. Other actions such as bullet grazing, coin collection, BSS coins, upgrade levels, EXP gain, and much, much more contribute to the final tally at the end of the game. Steam leaderboards add a competitive layer to the scoring as well, so players can stack themselves up to others around the world.
just like in its previous incarnation, Diadra MT on Steam has a great sense of style. Of course, this version in particular adds a few features that make Diadra MT worth revisiting. Diadra MT's visuals are still nice and detailed with all kinds of bright colors and pastels that never come off as especially harsh. They're also still on the tiny side, which can keep people with less than great vision like myself from truly appreciating the work that has gone into some of the sprites whilst whizzing around at high speed. There also seems to be a filter on the graphics that keeps them looking less pixelated on high-res displays as compared to the original Desura release. However, the same lack of animation on larger enemies is still also present, as are the nasty graphical tears around shots and spawning foes. The sound too is exactly as it was the last time around, with some great tunage that, at times, really captures the aloneness Nialra and Minimi are subject to versus the thousands of enemies they are tasked with fighting. The sound effects too are mostly well thought out, but can sometimes make players think that their dragon is getting hit by an enemy shot, when really, its cry is just to indicate recovery. Rounding out the Steam version in particular, achievements, Steam leaderboards, and trading cards have all been added to enhance Diadra's already decent replay value. So how does this version stack up to the original release? Let's take a look. Diadra Empty is every bit as high speed as you'd expect, which can be a blessing and a curse. Players will often need to fiddle with the controls before they are just right. It's not especially hard to beat Diadra Empty with enough practice, but later game modes ramp up the challenge. With 8 stages and multiple unlockable modes, not to mention a ton of different weapons to unlock through its RPG-style level progression, there really is a ton of gameplay here. Tiny sprites will make players squint, but otherwise are sharp and smooth. A lack of animation on larger enemies and graphical tears are still ever-present, though. A great OST and mostly great sound effects are once again present in the Steam version of Diadra Empty. Diadra Empty on Steam still has that great blend of Defender, RPG, and Dojin charm that will have players coming back for more. For just less than 6 bucks, Diadra Empty is one of those Dojin titles that shooting fans looking for ridiculous depth should be downloading. Diadra Empty on Steam gets a 4.25 out of 5. You can get a copy of Diadra Empty on Steam today for just $5.99. This version's still fun gameplay, affordability, and extra features are ultimately worth the double dip. Sarah Flash here, do you want your very own copy of Diadra Empty on Steam? I'll pick 5 lucky commenters from the comments below if you can tell us what doujin shmup you'd like to see a western publisher bring over. Names will be drawn on the 17th of August, 2015.